Um, hi guys, this is Valkyrie. Um, I figured I'd make a tutorial about how to do a basic line art, like how to paint a basic line art, or at least how I paint. Um, I've started using Photoshop now. I think I've done like half of a piece using Photoshop and started another. But for this, I'm going to use GIMP, so for all of you who can't afford Photoshop or don't want to get Photoshop or just want to play around with something, yeah. Um, I usually do 1500 by 1000 for my canvas, there's no particular reason why, that's just what I do, and then I fill it with a random colour, like usually light brown or browny grey colour or something. Um, to find a line art, go to DeviantArt and type in horse lines. Um, now this is kind of naughty, but I don't go to the resources in stock, like you can, but I find a lot of people actually submit their lines under digital art, but still allow them for stock use, like they say so in the description. So if we go through and find a couple, I don't know, what we got? Um, just like a couple of random ones just to show you. So you bring them up. So this one's in resources and stock images. Shows all the stuff. You go read their rules. Make sure you can use it on Pony Box if you're planning to sell it or use it as a horse picture or something. Um, I've also found that if you go to more like this, if they show that, so you browse more like this, you can find a lot of really good line arts. If it loads. Um, See this one's in digital art, so these lines are free to use as long as credit is given, given if the image is uploaded to blah blah blah. So you just read the descriptions and find one that you can use sort of thing, you know? Um, but if you get a browse more like this, it will show it if your internet's working, <laughs> which mine isn't. So it'll show like a couple of really good ones, you know? Um, once you have your line art, you open as layers, and you find where it is, it'll be like I saved them all on a stock folder under lines, see, and go through, find them. Um, now I'll show you if I can. Just say you have one that has a white background, Ooh, like this one. This one has a white background. Um, if I scale it, scale layers over here, uh, make it say 1200. So see how it has a white background? So I'm just going to add the alpha channel through here. Then you go to image. I think it's image. Was it layer? Transparency. Color to alpha. And see how it automatically does it? Then just hit OK. And that gets rid of the white background. Which is nice and simple, isn't it? <laughs> um, I don't really like Arabs, but I suppose for the purpose of this video this will be alright. Uh, you want to add a new layer underneath the lines. The flipping thing will work, which it isn't, because it doesn't work when you have a new program up. Uh, let's call it, say, base. Uh, um, then go and find a colour that you want to use. Just say so you want to make it a bay. Uh, something kind of reddish, I guess. Maybe like a red bay. Usually, I usually start with like a darker colour, then build lighter on top of that, but never go black straight away because that way you can't do shadows. And just randomly block it in. I'm not too picky about where it goes over the lines because I can always tidy that up with the eraser later. I never quite worked out how to use the a thing where it won't go over the line sort of thing. Um, so just block it all in randomly, just cover everything. Nice and simple. Uh, you can at this stage, if you want to, go through and add some other colours. Like say, I want to add points. It's going to be a bay. So I get an even darker brown or maybe even a black, depending how dark I want to go. Um, that'll work. Make that slightly smaller. I want, oops, I want to say fuzzy brush. And oops, zoom in. And just go around where you want the points to be, sort of thing, you know, like around the eyes for bays, on the ears. Oh, stupid 
thing is not working guys zoom out no zoom out there we go um the legs i on the legs as well uh use the references if you have to because sometimes it's hard to get the color right say you want to have a bay with really with like lots of brown on it or something like that you know with nice big points that go up the legs to make it look really nice and vivid sort of thing um, at this stage too sometimes I'll go through and put in the markings and I usually keep the markings layer on top of the points obviously because otherwise you won't be able to see it um, I never use full white for the markings otherwise I can't really add highlights so we'll do say a greyish colour and I want to use that one and we'll give him some nice big socks. You can always change it later. And we'll give him one random sock on his back leg too. We won't do the other leg. Just so he looks nice and pretty. I also want to give this guy a star. So I'll just block in a nice little star with a small brush. And then he has a nice little, maybe an interrupted stripe or something. Just to make him look all pretty. I'm sorry if you can hear the rain. We've got like a mini hurricane on at the moment, which was fun to bring horses in. <laughs> Alright, so he's going to have a little interrupted stripe down here, and we're going to give him a nice little snip too. Because snips are cute. Who doesn't like snips? And because it's an interrupted stripe, we're going to have another little bit in there. So, those are the markings. That's fairly easy, and my stupid zoom feature isn't working because it's stupid. So, there's, look, it's already looking pretty much like a horse, isn't it? <laughs> um, three more minutes, right? So, sometimes at this stage as well, I might go and block in lighter, like a lighter brown where the, shade, where the shading's gonna go. Um, to do that, holy crap, to do that, I select the base color and then I just play with it and I select a slightly lighter colour then I get my brush and I use the fuzzy brush and I take the opacity down a little and do where the light's gonna fall on your horse sort of thing you know just, just go around just adding some nice little highlighty bits in there making them look all nice and pretty uh, see how it's over the top of my markings you kind of want that to be under your markings my thing's not going to let me do because every time I use a program it doesn't work. Oh, come on. So we're going to move it up without dragging it. Okay, so that's being stupid, but ideally you want your light, like everything to be under your markings, otherwise it's going to go over top of it like you can see up there. Alright, so also under your points, obviously. So I'm going to fix that when I stop this video because it's not working at the moment. Um. So yeah, you can go through and add some lighter, just go over it sort of thing, you know, just anywhere you want there to be light falling on the horse. And then, how much time do I have? A minute and a half, that's right. Then I'm going to get my smudge brush. I usually put it about 50-ish, somewhere around there, just because it's easy. Make it slightly bigger and then go around little circles like this. I find circles give the best sort of blend. I love the smudge feature on GIMP, I absolutely hate it on Photoshop, it sucks. But you're basically just going to go through and blend everything so it looks reasonably nice, you know. See, it already looks pretty nice, doesn't it? And at this point you kind of want to save it as well, so... <laughs> once every, Anytime you do any sort of major change, you kind of want to save it, just so that you don't lose any work because apparently GIMP crashes for a lot of people. Never happened for me, but yeah, so this is the basic bit. I'm going to start another video and start working on some more bits.